Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Building better minds is part of the aim of education and cognitive science can help. This discipline is the study of how brains process information and some of the research can suggest ways to improve learning outcomes. This week we explore how it can be useful, particularly for people with learning disabilities. Do your children dread reading out loud? Do they struggle with school? Appropriate cognitive academic intervention can help young people overcome difficulties like these, as we see in this school in Paris. For the last two years, a specialist school has been open in Paris for youngsters with so-called dis problems. There are 18 pupils at the Seren school and all of them have been diagnosed with specific learning difficulties. Perhaps the best known dis condition is dyslexia, but there are many more, like dysphasia, dyscalculia and dyspraxia. I don't like reading much. Dorian is dyslexic, a problem that affects learning to read. For all the children at Siren, the problems are neurological and they'll have to deal with them for the rest of their lives. We feel less strange here. In a mainstream school, we have more difficulties than the others. So they treat us differently, like disabled children. These youngsters need more time to learn, but Seren's specialized resources and staff are intended to help them overcome their difficulties. During the day, they have access to a speech therapist and a psychologist, and one hour is set aside for individual tuition. That means we can have some one-on-one -on -one time with each child. You can really go through a lesson and explain it clearly. On their own, they can ask more questions. It's estimated so-called dis problems affect between 8 and 12 percent of the population. The founder of Seren believes that once a child is diagnosed as dyslexic through a neurological checkup, he or she must be given thorough educational support. Our project at Seren is really to create a bridge between cognitive neuroscience and education. Education is still considered too often as an art, the art of teaching, teaching methods. The teacher not only has to master the profession, but also how the brain learns, and to know how to manage a class properly so that the lessons come alive. It costs almost a thousand euros a month for a child to attend Siren, a sum partially or sometimes totally reimbursed by the state. Since the school was set up, the response has been positive. They're smiling again and are happy to come to school, so everyone's a winner. Self confidence is another quality they aim to build at Siren, with the eventual goal of helping youngsters return to mainstream school. Moving south to Spain, let's visit a center which is using the latest scientific techniques to understand how the brain works when we are reading, counting or learning a language. All with the aim of improving young people's lives. Let's take a look. The Basque Center of Cognition, Brain and Language or BCBL is an international center researching cognition, the brain and language. It was set up in 2008 on a technology park at San Sebastian in Spain. The core mission is to understand how language is acquired and processed. Two of the main goals are to understand learning a second language and the acquisition of literacy. To that end, scientists work closely with teachers to apply the results of their research in the classroom.
In fact, we have a laboratory in one of the schools, and what I foresee is that some of the discoveries we'll make in BCBL will be very useful in improving the quality of life of children with special educational needs. The research is centered on learning disorders in the acquisition of language. One of them is dyslexia, a permanent disorder in the process of learning to read that can be found in normal children without any pre-existing psychological or psychiatric problem. Dyslexia is a severe learning problem. It can be spotted in the first year of learning to read. It's possible to detect if a child is showing signs of difficulties in deciphering, that is, whether he or she can decode words. It's a good indicator of possible future problems. They're also researching other disorders that are less well known. Dyscalculia is a disorder rooted in what we call the numerical concept. It's something in common with the rhesus macaque with animals that allows us to discriminate and make rough calculations. Dyscalculia is found in a very specific area of the brain and it has a clear hallmark. Being totally dedicated to language, the Basque Centre is unique and it's located in an area where two very different languages meet the Latin-based Castilian Spanish and the pre-Indo-European Basque. When learning languages or any other subject, long-term memory is important. So what teaching techniques encourage the development of strong long-term memory? Are teenagers trying to study at the wrong time of the day? In this report, Dr. Paul Kelly, the pioneering head teacher and education writer, explains his ideas. Paul Kelly raised more than a few eyebrows when he was a head teacher in North East England with his unconventional teaching methods. He applied the American theory of spaced learning, where intensive teaching periods are interspersed with 10 minute breaks. The theory says it's not time learning that forms the long term memories, but the gaps in between. Were you ever bored at school? Are your children bored at school? There's a reason for that. Our brain can operate it up to a thousand kilometers an hour, and yet we're teaching them at a snail's pace. They're better solutions. Space learning is where you have intense learning for up to 20 minutes, and then a 10 minute break because the body slows down as the cells make the changes they have to, to create a memory. And then the same intense input again, three intense inputs, two 10 minute breaks, Space learning. There's so much more to learn these days. Education faces a huge challenge. Here at the British Library, thousands of books arrive every week. It was different for Sir Isaac Newton. For him, there were only a few thousand books published in the whole year he was researching. So what did he give us? In his scientific work, he discovered the secret of gravity. And what do modern scientists give us? They give us the answer to the question, why is it teenagers are so hard to get out of bed in the morning? The reason teenagers don't get up in the morning is here. In 2000, they discovered a new system within the human brain. And that system determined our waking and sleeping. In fact, a lot of our actions through every day. Teenagers and adolescents needed to wake up two to three hours later than other people. And it's something we can't change. So instead of telling teenagers to get up in the morning and go to school, we need to move school times so they get up at the right time. The human brain's a marvelous creation. Just think I'm now walking around, thinking, talking, listening to the traffic, all of these things going on at the same time. My heart's beating. The whole thing is orchestrated by my brain. How could we possibly think that the best way of teaching was making somebody sit down and not move and listen to a person for an hour? Unusual way of learning indeed. Before we go, do you agree that spaced learning is an effective way of building long-term memory? We would love to hear your ideas, so don't hesitate to get in touch on our social media pages. Goodbye for now. 
Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.